and understand us, I think. Yeah, I actually agree. I, 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 I think we might be making too much out of the tax issue here. From a multinational standpoint, from a multinational, from a multinational standpoint, Singapore is competitive. It, now 17% is even better than it was um, around what type of long-term competitiveness that we're building here. And in order to invest in it, you need to have tax revenues. So I think it's a little bit, uh, be, what would you do with a 15% tax, you know, um, versus, uh, versus the 17%? And I'm not sure it's going to spur that much more economic growth. Well, I, I, think, I, th I think we would be concerned because if you keep on dropping the corporate tax rate and then also the top, top tax rate for the top income earners, would that mean that you'll have to recover it from a higher GST, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, that will be a concern also for the, I mean, that will be a concern also for the lower income. You have to, I suppose, get your revenue from somewhere. So I, I, I suppose, I don't know whether poor. these are... We're not poor, we're not poor. These, so I don't know if these, these are the considerations, <laughs> but if these are going to be the trade-offs, then I think we would be concerned. No, no. I think but what's, the, what's, the, what's the corporate tax rate in Norway and what's the individual no, no, tax rate in Norway? No, I'm talking about the overall budget <laughs> surplus you know, for, for Norway, like 20% you know, of, of GDP, etc., uh, and, and Saudi Arabia as well. So we're not poor from that standpoint. I think mm. our consolidated budget surplus is you know, quite a sizable percentage of GDP as well. So we're not poor from that standpoint. I think we can do okay. more. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll just take yeah, uh, just, Rennie in here for I, I would say that. Look, let's not uh, uh, take it one go. Huh? Let's wait and see. I mean, today's world is so volatile. We don't know where the bottom is. I would rather, as Minister put it before, what do you say, some, keep, keep some dry powder? <laughs> I prefer that. But you see, our economy has evolved over the years. We've moved into higher-end manufacturing now. And to me, this per thing is very interesting because it allows our company to upgrade. The incentives for innovation, all these are preparing us for a better day. And a better day will come. It's a question of when. And because of the question of when, I think uh, to do everything now may be not, not if so... I, if I could just add, you know? some, a lot of the companies we spoke to when we were trying to get them to come on to Spur, they, they felt that it was a very innovative scheme, yes. you know. And in fact, there was one of our companies that is being uh, interviewed on the Japanese, on the Japanese uh, you know, TV because the, they found it very innovative and they're highlighting it, hoping that their government yes. will introduce it as well. Yeah. So the feedback has been that, yes, the government has been quite fast in terms of coming up with initiatives. Huh? So uh, I think that generally has been positive. But, but I do hope that you know, companies will really push yeah. and get onto spur and take advantage of the various other initiatives to develop capabilities. You know, I'm speaking from a selfish point of view from a manufacturer's angle. No? When times were good, manufacturers have difficulty getting engineers. We lost engineers to the finance and banking yeah, circle. Yeah. So with this per thing, you know, which includes professionals, we welcome that. Yeah. It's a chance for us to get back some of those engineers into our industry. Yeah, not only that, I think during good times, it's difficult for companies to release their workers to go for training full time. Precisely, yeah. You see, because they have to keep the production schedule, you see. So now with a bit of slack, they're able to send people, you know, uh, 200 workers to go for training full time. Yeah. So I think that's really good, actually. Only and one in terms of helping them to build their capabilities. Only one sure. problem we have. Some of our SMEs are saying, look, we only have 10 workers. We yeah. cannot afford to release them. Yes. You know? yeah, so I think those issues yeah. need to be looked at. And, and we're saying to them, well, at the end of the day, why don't you uh, plan it such that you multi-skill the people? Not only so multi-skill, now yeah. SPUR is so enlarged, you can even do it in-house. Yeah. They allow for training to be done at the but company. for smaller companies as even well? Even for I'm smaller sure. companies. Okay. You've got to sit down and yeah. work out the details. Okay, we're going to get Minister to get, uh, get a quick word in on this issue. I, th I think uh, there's, there's uh, uh, good grounds for your, your concern about SMEs. What uh, MOM, Ministry of Manpower, is trying to do is uh, what Halima just mentioned, uh, what Halima just mentioned, which is sort of in-house courses. Mm -hmm. That have to be a certain standard, obviously, okay. a certain quality standard. And uh, that's an important priority in the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, not every company can send uh, its workers to courses outside that are really relevant yes. to what it's doing on its own production yes, line. Yes, yes, yes. So certifying in-house courses, it could be a group of companies in a cluster yes. getting together to develop their own programs so a sort of a collective in-house program, so to speak. So that's a key priority for yes. MOM going forward. Mm. Yeah. In fact, okay. we're talking to WDA about generic manufacturing training, precisely what you talk about, the general skills in manufacturing, where a few companies can get together. Yeah. All right, on that note, we're going to hold the discussion for a moment and go for a quick break. Sure. You're watching the Singapore Budget Forum 2009. We'll be back in a few minutes.
Hello again, you're watching the Channel News Asia Budget Forum. This is the last part of our program here, so I'll just kick off the discussion. So I'll just kick off the discussion. Halima, you know, with the measures to support the families, for individuals and households. Yes, I'm very happy, particularly with the GST credits. Doubling of the credits is very important, especially for the low-income households, you know. Because during this time, some of them may have lost their jobs, and those who are having jobs have got their pay cut, you see. So this GST credits at least help them. If it's not meant to, uh, to, to address the issue of inflation or high cost of living, at least to help them keep afloat, and that's very critical. I'm also happy with the top up, the education top up, the MediSave, MediFund, you know, all the measures to help the low income. And I'm particularly happy that we didn't have to ask in Parliament, but it's really in the budget, the, uh, the uh, support for the low, in the poor, you know, the needy increased, you know, from uh, 330 to 360. I think that's also important because they also impacted and those because we also see increasingly that uh, you know voluntary groups are getting finding it more difficult to get uh, sponsors to get donations so if that is the the, if that is a challenge, it's difficult for it to trickle down to them as well. Huh? Yeah, so the increase David, will be useful. Yeah. David, in on this, the public assistance. Sure, I think it's I think it's great news for us. I think uh, it's good that while it's pro-business, the budget, I think it fills this out to the individual. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the uh, public assistance will enable them, I think, to probably afford more uh, well, probably a better uh, yes. a food and uh, essential items that they're buying. Yeah. But I think more important, I think, is uh, we believe in assistance to a self-reliance. Mm -hmm. I think it must start with the individual. And in, in hard times like this, uh, the individual must adapt, must change. And uh, the expectations in terms of uh, salary, in terms of the comfort of a job they are familiar with, uh, their expenses, uh, the way they manage their money, all has to change to cope in these difficult times. Uh, I think the family should still be the first line of support. But I'm glad that, that I think now they have cash, and cash is king. Uh, so I'm glad that it's all going to their pocket and they have something to think and cheer for the new year. But you're concerned about people who have no work at this point, though? Yes, very much so. And, and I think that uh, they will be trapped. Uh, as we move along, uh, you find that those who have uh, work fair bonus, it's all subject to employment. And I think given times when it's employers market, like I said earlier, uh, they will find increasingly difficult to stay employed. So we, we should, uh, it is a good break. But I hope that within three or six months, like Halimah say, we could uh, get over that curve. I think then that would be excellent. Actually, I want to bring Minister in on this issue about the Workfare Improvement Scheme. Uh, David mentioned an interesting point. You benefit only if you have work. Yeah. Uh, but what about the people in this you know, day and age where the economy is not doing well and they have no work? They don't quite benefit from that scheme. Yeah. Well, I think the best approach is, of course, we help them in the short term. You know, when people fall out of a job, their families are in, in need. They approach the MP, they approach various other, they approach the MP, they approach various other, mm -hmm. the CDCs and so on. They'll be helped. But the best approach really is to focus on helping them to mm -hmm. where jobs are available. Mm -hmm. Right now, in the midst of the recession, there are lots of jobs available across a whole range of sectors, mainly in the services sectors, yeah. some parts of manufacturing. Not just construction and marine, mm -hmm. you know, because not everyone can work in those sectors. A whole range of service sector jobs. So what David mentioned about individual self-reliance, one of the key things about that is that when you're in a hole, mm -hmm. there are ways of, in which we can help you come out of it mm -hmm. if you're willing to help yourself. Yes. And training you up for a new job, come out of it mm -hmm. if you're willing to help yourself. Yes. And training you up for a new job on a very heavily subsidized level, there are training schemes available. Let's persuade people to take them up. In fact, I think the PMAT increase in the cost subsidy coverage from 80% to 90% is really good, especially for those who have lost their jobs. Mm. This is a real booster. Mm. Yeah. And also Comcare. I think the Comcare amount has increased. Increased. Yeah. I think we have always found that it's a challenge to, uh, you know, to actually dish out the, the Comcare mm. because it's a, that's a quantum that we can dish out. 600 bucks for three months. So now with the new emergent segment, that's the middle income, Although we talk about upper middle income, but the middle income is now coming forward to ask for help. Mm. And I think with the additional money and hopefully with the flexibility, we hope that we could extend it much longer than just three months. Mm. That will help. That will help. Minister? I think there's something the CDCs can look at. Whether something that's uh, on a six monthly basis will be helpful, it's worth looking at. Uh, interesting point though, this budget. Though, um, in previous budgets, it was very much focused on low income.